Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Tutorials in MATLAB. In this tutorial we explain how to transform transfer functions to state space models in MATLAB. Okay, let us immediately start. Here as a test case I will define a transfer function and this transfer function will be of the second order. It will have a single zero and two poles. The transfer function has this form. W of s is equal to 2s plus 10 over 2s squared plus 5s plus 4. First, let us learn two approaches for defining this transfer function in MATLAB. But before we do that, let's clear the workspace and let's clear the command window history. This is a standard practice. The first approach consists of defining arrays representing the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator and the denominator. Consequently, let's define numerator 1. This array or this vector will store the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator. We have 2, 10. And in the denominator, we have 2, this coefficient here, comma, 5, comma, 4. Okay, we define a transfer function like this. W is equal to, the MATLAB function is TF, the first argument is the array storing the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator, and the second input argument is the array storing the coefficients of the polynomial in the denominator. And let's see the output. Here's our transfer function, and that's exactly the transfer function defined over here. Next, let's explain the second approach for defining the transfer function. This approach might be easier for new users. The goal here is to define an S variable to be actually a transfer function. Okay, so this is what I wrote. This means that S is actually now a transfer function itself. And then we can directly enter our transfer function as a ratio, or better to say as a symbolic ratio, depending on s. So we have 2 multiplying s, you can look it up here, plus 10 over, let's see what do we have in the denominator, we have 2 multiplying s squared, plus 5 multiplying s, plus 4. And let's see this transfer function. Now, here you can see F, W again, it's the same thing. Over here, let's just change the indices. Let this be W1 and let this be W2. To make the distinction between these transfer functions, let's evaluate everything again and let's do W1 minus W2 to make sure that everything is zero. You can see it is, it is a static gain. Let's continue. Our goal is to transform this transfer function into the standard state space form that looks like this. x dot is equal to ax plus bu and the output is y is equal to cx plus du. That is, we want to extract the system matrices a, b, c, and d. So let's see how to do that. To do that, we have at least two approaches. Here is the first approach. Okay, so the idea over here is to first extract the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator and the denominator. That is, we assume that we are only given w1 and w or w1 or w2, and we want to extract the coefficients now. We do it like this. We use the function tf data. We specify the transfer function, in our case w1, and over here we specify v. This means that we want to extract the values as vectors, not as cells. Good. The output will be numerator coefficient extracted, I will call it like this, and denominator coefficients extracted. Okay. Good. Let's see now what happens. Aha. Uh -huh. We can see that numerator extracted is 0, 2, 10. It's basically 2 and 10. And in the denominator, we have 2, 5, and 4. Perfect. Let's continue. 
Okay, now that we have that, we can simply do this trick. We can use the MATLAB's function tf2ss. tf2ss, as the name suggests, transforms transfer functions to state space models. So the first input argument is numerator extracted, that is the array representing the coefficients in the numerator, and the second input argument is the array representing the coefficients in the denominator. And the output will actually be the system matrices A, comma B, comma C, comma D. Okay, so again, this function will directly compute A, B, C, and D. So let's run this. And here are the A, B, and C, and D matrices A, B, C, and D. Good. Let's continue. Now we can simply form a state space model. I will call this state space model as SS model 1 and it will be simply SS standing for the state space and then we simply specify A comma B comma C comma D and this is our state space model 1 okay here it is here's the state space model perfect next let's explain the second approach okay so here's the second approach the idea of the second approach is actually to directly use the trans to directly use the transfer function and to use the function ss. So we can write ssw1 and this will take the transfer function w1 and convert the transfer function to the state space model. Okay. So the output will be ss model 2. And let's run this. Okay, let's run again once more. And now we have SS model 2. Here it is. Now, let's compare SS model 1 and SS model 2. Over here, let me type SS model 2. Here it is. And let's write SS model 1. And let's see the difference. Okay, so let's analyze. You can see the A matrix over here for the SS model 2. And you can see the A matrix for the SS model one. Okay, so are they the same? They are the same, right? How about the B matrix? Uh-huh, you can see for the SS model two B matrix here. However, SS model one has a different B matrix. Uh-huh, how about the C matrix? This is the C matrix of the SS model two, and this is the C matrix of the SS model one. So it looks like that the matrices are different. Mm. So let's confirm that. So let's do this. SS model 2 dot A will give you A. So let's do a simple test. I will write this thing like this. Okay, there's zero. Let's do B. Aha, uh -huh. we can see that the B matrices are not the same. And let's see the C matrix. Here it is, they are not the same. So are these two state space models the same or not? That is, are they equivalent? Well, they are. In control theory, there is a theorem saying that two state space models are equivalent up to a similarity transformation. That is, there are infinite number of state space models representing the same dynamical system. And by changing the state space variable, that is, by using linear transformation, we can transform from one form to another. And this is very important to keep in mind. That is, SS function might not return the unique model. How can we verify that actually these are the two models? Well, the trick here is to use the function mean real and to compute the difference between SS model 2 and SS model 1. And let's see the difference. Aha, uh -huh. we can see that the output is actually a simple static gain. This is actually zero. And we can see that four states remove, are removed. So this function will actually compute the difference between these two state space model and it will reduce or cancel poles in zero, which completely cancel and you completely get a zero DC gain. That's it, simple as that. And as the final step, we can also compute the step responses and we can compare the step response. So let's do that. First of all, let's define a new figure 
And over here, let's compute the step response of the first system. I will call it YS1, TS1, and then I will use step. And I will specify my state space model. This is SS model 1. This will compute the state, uh, the step response, and it will, it will store the step response in YS1 and TS1. TS1 is time, and YS1 will be the time series representing the step response. Let's do the same thing for the second model. Okay, now let's compute these two vectors. Let's plot the difference. We can simply plot ys2 minus ys1 and as the result we should simply obtain 0 as you can see over here. You can also convince yourself that this is the case by simply computing this difference and you will see that the difference is simply equal to 0. Here it is. Okay, that's all for today.